rhyme like Big, big, biggie, yeah. really the boss of rap, biggie, biggie, With the Newmark biggie. TTX is, is the actual motor goes bad. Everything still works in the machine, but when you push start, basically the motor doesn't work. So what we're going to do now is we're going to change the motor in this TTX-1. It's basically the same thing to, for doing it on the newer TTX and the original TTX. The step we're going to do is we're going to pull the platter off. Pretty simple, you got two holes, the platter just comes up. Put this aside, and now underneath, you're going you're gonna to take these four screws that go around the inside of the motor out. I've already taken mine out as you can see, and now we're going to turn the unit over so we can get the uh, motor out of it. Now you're going to want to get a pillow, that way you have something to lean this against. You don't want obviously the tone arm, because this thing's so heavy, you don't want it to sit on itself. So when you turn it over, just put the one side on there, that way the tone arm stays below. That way you're not messing up. As you can see, there's quite a few screws holding this down, so you're going to have to take these screws out in order to get the bottom plate off. As you can see on the bottom, when you're pulling out some of these screws, some are going to be longer than others. What I've done in the longer screws, I've go ahead and little make a little mark next to them. Uh, you can do it another way if you want it to be erasable. I don't really care what the bottom side of the CDX looks like. I'm sorry, the TTX looks like, so I'm just going to put marks on the ones that take the longer screws. So now that you've got the screws out of the bottom, you can start pulling this up. You're going to want to turn it around, obviously, so the hard weight's on there to get the bottom portion off. There's still some screws under here that you want to get out, so just be careful popping this bottom panel off. Once you have the bottom panel off, you're just going to put it aside. Now that you've got the bottom panel off, put it back upside down so the tone arm's not against the thing once again. And now you're going to see there's a few more screws holding this panel in before you can access the part you need to change. Now that you've got the four screws that were in the top out, you can just pull this part off. Be careful, it's pretty heavy, not attached to anything, but now you can see you finally gained access to the board that we need to change. Now that we have our replacement, uh, we're going to put it in. This is a non-variable torque motor, so this one's going to go into this one just like this. As you can see, we've got to take a few of these wires out. These have to come unclipped here. This has to come unclipped here. This little ground strap has to come undone. These grounding straps here, this one, and this one. Once we get those out, since we already loosened it on the other side of the platter, this piece will just come out and we can pop our new motor in. Now that we've got them all done, we got this one undone, this one undone. There's three ground straps that go into this side, where we took that screw out. This one here, this one here, and then there's two ground straps that go in this side over here. So at this point, we can finally pull our board out. Be careful on this side wiggling it out, because there's a couple things holding it in. When you're pulling it up, you got to be careful because on the underside, you have this here. This is what senses the platter. This has two pieces right here. You have a screw here and a screw here that need to come out to get this piece off to attach it to the new one. As you can see, the new one actually has this wire here already installed. So basically, you're just going to install these here. As I told you before, I said to take that one out. It doesn't matter. First things first, we're going to reinstall the sensor back on to the new board. Now that you got the sensor board back on, you're going to flip it back upside down and make sure that these wires are still in the locations that they were before, and you're going to get this thing back together. You're going to make sure that these here, these line up inside the holes. Once you have it down, make sure that you look underneath and make sure none of these wires are tangled or anywhere near the motor. Now that you've got everything in, make sure there's no wires that are underneath here where the board sits and make sure that it's sitting okay. You might even want to turn it around and look at the other side and make sure there's no wires up underneath where the spindle goes. Now you're going to put this black panel back on the bottom and put the four screws back in where they belong. Like you, you may have forgot which ones had holes in them or which ones on here you need to put the screws back. You can take this and see which ones, like this one here, that had a screw in it before. Okay, now you're gonna take this and you're gonna put this back on. Now that you've got all your screws in the bottom, you're gonna flip it back over so we can put the other platter plates back in. Now I'm putting these screws back in the top to hold the motor down from the top side. Now the last step is putting the platter back on. Make sure you line the two nubs up with the ones on the top of the motor. That way it will go down flat. Now 
now that we've plugged the unit in, we go ahead and turn it on and hit the play button. And now you can see the platter is moving. Turn it up, moves faster. It's working. Remember to visit instrumentalparts.com for all your spare parts needs for all your musical equipment. And remember, we also have mpcstuff.com for your Kai MPC needs.